Hi, welcome to Death Wears a Boa special commentary track special edition DVD. <laughs> this is Josh Self. I was one of the directors. And this is William Brownell. I helped with the writing and just general manic fun that we had on making this, this short little film. Uh, the title, how, do you th how did we come up with the well, title? Well, I think we were... I know I remember we were really struggling with the title and I think we were trying to come up with something that would strike a balance against the heavy seriousness of the film so we went with something that was just kind of straightforward and it also helps explain the character of right, death. Right, there was that expo exposition of the title exactly. and the, the character of death. That's right. Okay, in this opening shot where we start on the train and we pan around, that was my only Big real, wish. as far as visual, contribution to the picture. Where I said, let's start on the train, let's pan around and stop on uh, the character of the, the drug addict. It was kind of an establishing scene to uh, show where the drug addict was in his life. Without exactly, and, and, and they went they went with my idea and I was really excited. Alright, as you can see, with there's a them, little man. piece of yellow right there. We were supposed to use yellow, so we thought everybody would for sure see our little yellow flower in a little yellow paper cup. And but Jay was wearing a yellow shirt. Yeah, apparently nobody really recognized what that was. Yeah, in this scene, JP did a really good job of portraying a uh, drug addict. I wanted to kind of portray a sense of power uh, that Nathan's character, the drug dealer, had. So we filmed him like looking up, so he was kind of powerful. And, and he did an excellent <laughs> job as well. He was really good. Uh, in this scene where he's shooting up, we decided to do a lot of uh, kind of special effects from uh, Premiere. That is actual slobber right there. And it grosses me out. <laughs> There's just the kind of the plug-in effects that Premiere already had and some, some weird dissolves at, at the right times to make him look like he's kind of fading in and out. You may not be able to really notice this because it's so well done, but JP did his own makeup. He walked over to where we were shooting this, reached down, grabbed a handful of dirt, and rubbed it all over his body. The man is dedicated. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right after the scene right here, JP ends up actually locking his keys inside his car, so we couldn't recut the scene, redo the scene anymore. His keys were inside the car that whole night. So we had to use leave. that shot. The crickets are fake. The people I've let watch this movie never even noticed that. Yeah, the only part where uh, the cricket you, crickets are noticeable is after he opens the door, which I mean, it was too late to fix it after. But after he opens the door, the crickets get really loud and booming. <laughs> That uh, surprise part uh, when they when he comes in the door was actually edited for time, and unfortunately, my on-screen appearance was cut out. But I know it's such a disappointment. Yeah, and they actually brought in a birthday cake with candles on. That's when you see that birthday cake. A yellow, cake more yellow. yellow, yellow birthday cake. We tried to implement our, our color in there, but I guess it didn't work very well. So some people had more color than our, than we did. Well, it looks like he's gonna shoot up right there again. Hey, he's just gotta think for rolling up his sleeves. He's rolling up his sleeves again. And uh, that's the same flower that. That flower on the table is the same flower that was conveniently growing about five years ago when he was doing being a drug addict. The dialogue was kind of buried by the music. Buried by the music. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, it was buried by the music in this scene, and uh, so it didn't get across as well as we wanted it to. But it, you get the idea that he's trying to get away. He wants to get be alone, and he gets up and walks out. Right. This uh, pullback shot was done in a wheelchair, and I think it's Nathan holding the camera and Josh wheeling him backwards, and we're trying not to run over anything. Uh, something else I wanted to point out is using Shauna for death was something we wanted to do something oh. different, and instead of using the typical I had company? male You're, uh, dressed in black, right? we and a wanted, robe and stuff. Yeah, like that. robe like that. We wanted to go for something hard. that was a little different, Great and I, I really think, in my opinion, it works well. I love this over-the-shoulder shot over Shauna's shoulder because when you see her against the wall, there must be like a tiny <laughs> peephole in the wall where there's a camera. <laughs> I, l I love what you do with this, Josh. I love the back way the music suddenly goes backwards and she blinks right in time and it just does this flash into the fade back to when he was making the wish to die. I think that's what one of the best parts of the film. It gave yeah. me chills. I yeah. love it. Yeah, the first time we see JP, he's just kind of, we just I think he's kind of in, in the, hell. he's high and he's in this like drunken well, stupor. But this is what he's, we find out this is what he's actually good saying to himself now. at that time. I we had to very do this hard scene to get here. three different takes, and finally we woke up with our me. next door neighbor. He came out and said, what the F is going on here? Because JP was just, he was yelling. just yelling at the top of his voice. And this was, was so like funny. at 1 o'clock in the no, morning. No, it was about 4 o'clock. Yeah, that's right, it was about 4 o'clock. And JP's trot from death, <laughs> instead of running, he trots. <laughs> he trots. <laughs> yeah, this final scene was, I took it from adaptation, movie adaptation of Nicolas Cage. 
They told on the commentary track they told how they did that uh, one of the crash scenes. They had a, a stopped vehicle, then they put it in reverse and really quick went back. That way you can you can reverse it and it looks like it's going forward and actually gonna hit the people. Uh, the the music uh, we we kind of we we wanted to make this a good projection from beginning to end. Josh wrote this little piece called well I called it Constable and Josh played it and it's it fits. It's real simple and it fits. I like it. What I did was I just took some sampled world beat drum loops and just kind of did this like pick scratching thing on, on an acoustic yeah. and it kind of sounded like something Tarantino would put at the end of his movie kind of a like a 30s you know bongo whatever I guess I was kind of influenced by Kill Bill and the end of like Pulp Fiction stuff like that well that's it it was fun making it uh, we were very tired but it was great I thank everybody who participated thanks for including me and I hope to help out with another one in the future. And thanks to everyone for listening to this audio track. Yeah, everybody did a really good job in this one. I mean, it was a lot more professional than our other ones. Uh, Nathan, of course, brought in his camera gear this time. He got some new camera gear. Made It was a 3CCD camera. Made it made our film look really good. Uh, Daphne, all, of course, always funny. Did, always does a good job. And all the new people, Joey and Chris, who was the uh, dungeon master on our first one, always very funny, even though he didn't appear very much. <clears throat> and Shauna as death, very convincing death. Uh, everybody just did a really good job. And everybody who, thanks to everybody who, like, helped out and helped the lighting and the, the microphones and just to did set design. It, I mean, all of it came together at the end. We did we did really we went really fast and I mean we had everything done real early this time because everybody kind of pitched in and helped out it was really nice